So in the previous video, we did a quick overview of the menstrual cycle. And now we're familiar with the cycle's main events and the hormones that promote them. In this video, we will discuss the first half of the menstrual cycle, which is called the follicular phase. And it lasts from day zero to day 14. So basically from the beginning of the cycle until we reach ovulation. Remember that the menstrual cycle is divided into the ovarian and uterine cycles. Both of these cycles are affected and regulated by hormones, as we've seen in the previous video. And that means that we actually need to keep track of two cycles, which can be quite overwhelming. So to keep track of all this, we will use a graph and a diagram that will keep us company as we advance through the cycle. So without further ado, I present you the initiator of the cycle, gonadotropin releasing hormone. GnRH is secreted from the brain, or to be more precise, from the hypothalamus. The main function of the hypothalamus is maintaining the homeostasis of the body. In our case, it controls the menstrual cycle by secreting the GnRH. After its secretion, GnRH travels through a system of blood vessels called the hypophysial portal system. This portal system allows the hypothalamus to communicate with another part of the brain called the hypophysial gland, also known as the pituitary gland. And we can see it here. It is right below the hypothalamus. We can also see that the pituitary gland is divided into two portions, the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. But we only care about the anterior pituitary. Let's get back to GnRH. When GnRH reaches the anterior pituitary, it acts on cells called gonadotropes. And under the influence of GnRH, these uh, gonadotropes secrete two hormones known as gonadotropines. And that makes a lot of sense because the hormone is called gonadotropin-releasing hormone, right? Anyway, these gonadotropines are actually two hormones that we've already met. One of them is the follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and the other is the luteinizing hormone, LH. So let's place these two hormones on the graph and keep track of them. Next, these hormones travel to the ovary, where their job begins. FSH, as we mentioned in the last video, stimulates the maturation of the follicles. So under the influence of FSH, follicles can mature and grow larger and larger, as we can see on the graph. As part of the maturation process, the follicles develop a layer called theca interna. And this is where the luteinizing hormone comes in. LH acts on these theca interna cells and stimulates them to synthesize a hormone, or actually a hormone precursor. This hormone precursor is called androstenedione. And after androstenedione is synthesized, it diffuses out of the theca interna cells and enters the granulosa cells of the maturing follicles. Inside the granulosa cells, the androstenedione goes through a change. It is converted to a hormone that we've already met, the estradiol. So let's also put estradiol on the graph. We can see that it steadily rises as we advance in the cycle. What causes this uh, steady rise? Well, let's explain. As the follicles mature, the granulosa cells proliferate and expand their numbers more and more. As we've just mentioned, the granulosa cells are the source of estradiol. So more granulosa cells equals more estradiol. Now let's see why we need estradiol. Estradiol plays two important roles in the menstrual cycle. The first role is related to the uterus. Estradiol causes the inner layer of the uterus, a layer called endometrium, to proliferate and grow. And this is done in order to prepare the uterus for the implantation of a potential embryo. You can see this growth here on the graph. This growth period is called the proliferative phase of the uterine cycle, and this period, the, the proliferative phase, will continue until day 14. Notice that the proliferative phase begins a few days after the cycle has already begun, and we haven't really seen what happens in the first days of the uterine cycle. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about the first days or anything. It's just going to be easier to understand the stage, the first stage, when we reach the next video. Now let's get back to estradiol. The second role of estradiol is related to FSH and LH. It inhibits their secretion. And we can see it here on the graph. It inhibits them by acting on the hypothalamus and inhibiting the GnRH secretion. 
Remember that the GnRH is the hormone that is needed for FSH and LH secretion. On top of that, on top of inhibiting GnRH secretion, the estradiol also acts on the enteric pituitary and directly inhibits the secretion of FSH and LH. We're not done with estradiol just yet, because as the follicles continue their maturation, the estradiol continues to rise and it rises until it surpasses a concentration threshold, which we can see here on the graph. When astradiol surpasses this threshold, something rather strange happens. Astradiol stops acting as an inhibitor and starts acting as a powerful stimulator for FSH and LH secretion. Astradiol does so by acting on the hypothalamus once again and causing an increase in GnRH secretion. This causes an abrupt increase in LH and FSH concentrations, as we can see here on the graph. We can also see that the LH and FSH don't behave similarly. There is a huge increase in LH and a rather small increase in FSH. Why is that? Let's start with the FSH. Even though estradiol stimulates the secretion of FSH, another hormone counteracts it and inhibits the secretion of FSH. This hormone is called inhibin, and it is secreted by the granulosa cells. And that is the reason why we see this relatively modest increase of FSH compared to LH. LH, on the other hand, is not affected by inhibin, and it experiences a huge peak. This huge peak is called LH surge, and we can see that it occurs very close to ovulation. Uh, actually, it's about 36 hours before ovulation, if you want to be precise. This LH surge has a few extremely important roles in the final stages of follicle maturation. First of all, the high levels of LH trigger the primary oocyte to complete meiosis I and become the secondary oocyte. Its second role is triggering the ovulation of the dominant follicle by rupturing it and causing the ejection of the oocyte. And its third role is converting the granulosa cells and the theca cells of the ruptured follicle into lutein cells, forming the corpus luteum. So we can see what a profound impact the LH surge has on the, on the final stages of the follicle maturation. We're nearly done with the follicle maturation and with the follicular phase. Before we continue, we just need to take one more look at astradiol. Notice that its uh, levels take a nosedive as the corpus luteum forms. This happens because the granulosa cells that secrete the astradiol have differentiated into lutein cells that, of course, form the corpus luteum. Now that we're officially done with the first 14 days of the menstrual cycle, let's do a quick recap. We began with the GnRH that stimulated the secretion of FSH and LH. FSH, in turn, stimulated the maturation of a group of follicles. These follicles, under the influence of LH, began to secrete estradiol. Then, estradiol caused the andrometrium to proliferate and inhibited the secretion of FSH and LH. When estradiol concentration reached a certain threshold, it became a powerful stimulator of FSH and LH secretion. This led to an event called the LH surge, which in turn promoted the maturation of the oocyte, ovulation, and the formation of the corpus luteum. So now, at the end of the follicular phase, we have an ovulate oocyte and a corpus luteum. In the next video, we're going to continue and see the second half of the menstrual cycle.